I came outside to water and realized tomorrow <laughs> everything's gonna be gone. I mean, not gone, but I'll have harvested everything and I will no longer have much to water our large pots pretty much and some of my bulbs and flowers, but I don't know what I'm gonna do without being able to come out and escape into the space and tinker in it. I'm like, I'm getting brick bumped. I'm Bailey Van Tassel and I'm a garden blogger. I started documenting my whole gardening journey on Instagram and things just took off. I love writing, I love gardening, I love teaching people how to garden, how to cook with the food that they grow, why gardening is important. Um, most of all, I seek to inspire people to just get started. We are gardening in a small space deep in suburbia, Southern California. I never wanted to be here. I've been lamenting about it for years, but bloom where you are planted. You know what I mean? Like you've got to just embrace it and go for it. Like you've got to seize the dream now. So anyways, that's what we're doing. Way back, I was raised on a hobby farm in Northern California in Sonoma County. And as a child, my godmother, my Auntie Pammy, always had this gorgeous, amazing, incredible garden. And for some reason, I just, I mean, I wanted to be her anyways, but for sure I needed to have a garden like Auntie Pammy's. And, uh, and now we will. So I'm excited to just show you the whole process from start to finish and how um, <laughs> really incremental these projects are. Excuse me, ma'am. What are you doing? Pulling up onions, cutting down all the chard, pulling up beets. All right. Oh. There are more. I think there are more. You gotta find them. Well, got one. Got one, and then I want to save the flowers too because you can eat these. And they're so pretty. Yeah, you gotta open up and find the beans on the inside. <gasps> Ooh, there it is. So I went to a local spot that was getting rid of a bunch of dirt and stones and gathered all these stones up and had everyone in my community send in affirmations or prayer requests and I planted them. I wrote it out on little slips of paper, placed it under each stone when I made these guilds and they have fully disintegrated back into the earth now, emitting the good vibes. And I got ya. It's coming along. Removing them from all around these trees. They were holding in, they were creating guilds which are like little ecosystems underneath a tree that are there to help nourish the soil and create pollination and just good stuff for the trees. So um, we're gonna build new guilds and we have new trees, but guilds are super cool. Don't worry, I'm gonna add in plenty of fairy magic to the new garden. Anybody know what these are? Saffron crocus corms. So we're gonna pull these up and save these for next year. We are in this gorgeous new home and we have, we're on, I would say about a 10,000 square foot lot, which is kind of a quarter of an acre-ish, a little less. My garden is like, a, I would say probably a sixth of all of that space-wise. And we came to the house and, uh, well, first we saw the house online and it didn't fit into our filters. My husband cleared all the filters off of Zillow search because I had us looking at one acre properties. <laughs> and he's like, you have to come check out this house. It's absolutely stunning. I don't know about the garden, but like, let's just look at it. I'm like, okay. So we go look at the property and we show up and there's one area of the home that's not been photographed or featured on the listing at all because it's this heinous and ginormous patch of mulch. 
Flash forward, we now realize they just buried a bunch of old road bed into this side yard and covered mulch on it because it was the absolute most low impact and cheap solution. Not the best thing to do, but they weren't gonna live there, so it's fine. Anyways, I see this patch of mulch and I'm like, okay, done. It gets like eight hours of direct sun. It's in like a southwestern corner of the lot. I'm sold, I care about nothing else. So um, the house we're in, it's lovely and it's perfect, but we have waited two years to make this happen. I found three perfect little potatoes <laughs> while we were hand excavating. So I'm snagging some herbs that I love, that I wanna save. Primarily lemon verbena, lemon balm, otherwise known as Melissa, and echinacea. I love those three. Those are ones that will last forever. The echinacea roots especially, I wanna try and salvage and transplant. Um, but these are really the only plants in the garden right now that I feel attached to. The rest I'm just gonna harvest. Okay, here's my echinacea. I want the roots intact because that's really medicinal. These guys have been brewing and stewing for about a year, you can see but the really nutritious part of the root is closer to the plant. All out. Now we're gonna get this all to a good spot, get it graded a little bit, and throw in boxes. So the conversation that really started everything was around me not wanting to live here in Orange County, California. Um, in one of these discussions, arguments, discussion, it was a heated, heated discussion. We were talking about looking for homes and moving, you know, we're like looking on Zillow or whatever. And I'm like, all I want is a giant garden. I need to have my mini donkeys. I need this. I need that. I need this. And my husband's like, Beth, if you even had a garden, I don't even think you would use it. And you don't even know that you like gardening. So, <laughs> famous last words. I <laughs> went out that day to Home Depot and bought a pot, you know, yay big, that already had like six plants in it. Tomato, pepper, basil, chives, I don't know, a couple other random things shoved into this tiny pot. And I'm like, um, excuse me, do I need to do anything with this? How often should I water it? I basically know nothing. And the woman's like, just water it every couple days. You'll never need to transplant it and um, it should be fine. Just get like six hours of sun. I'm like, okay. So I take my pot home and I set it, you know, I, I'm scouring our property to make sure I know what gets six hours of sun, okay? I made this little, <laughs> this little chart on a piece of paper where every hour of the day I could step outside and see where the sun was, which is not a silly idea, but I was just so invested and excited. Um, Needless to say, long story short, I call my dad maybe six days into this adventure and my tomato plant is like so sad and wilty and I'm, I'm sending him a picture and I'm like, what's wrong with that? And he's like, I think it needs more water. I was like, she told me only to water every like few days. So I've only watered it once and he's like, just ease up. Like, you know, just <laughs> water it more if things look droopy and if the soil is dry, water it less if things start to get yellow. I'm like, okay. So, uh, only I think two plants from that pot actually survived. I think the tomato plant, I moved into a bigger pot completely by itself. And then maybe the, uh, the chives I was able to salvage. But by the time we got to that point, maybe like six months later, I was so obsessed and in love and invested in this gardening hobby. We knew we had to do something more. And that's when we uh, built our raised beds and started in on that whole journey. So, all out. Now we plan out where the beds go, irrigation, materials. Now we move. <laughs>